Hey, it's Joe Illick here. Pretty soon I will be joined by Metropolitan Opera star Jennifer Rowley. And we'll be talking about all kinds of things. So thanks for joining us. It's uh, noon in Santa Fe, where I am right now. And Jen will be joining us from Florida. And I think Jennifer is joining us right now. Hello. Hey, this worked. I'm so excited. Oh, you did it. You're so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. I am too. Right. <laughs> say, say that. Sometimes you break up a little bit. Oh, listen, it's raining in Florida. We have a big storm right now. So who knows? It could be okay. like. <laughs> it's, it seems to be when you back up. Okay, I'm going to stay forward. <laughs> stay, stay forward, Jen. Stay forward. How's it going? This is so nice. Hey. So great to see you. Thank you. Um, Where are you at right now? Santa Fe. Oh, Santa Fe. Okay. So yes. how's it there? Good? And you're in Florida, right? I'm in Florida. I bet it's warmer where you are than where I am. Gorgeous most every day, but today it decided it wanted to rain all day long, which... Wow. <sighs> It messes with my day when it's raining because I look out my window when I'm working and I see the beautiful blue sky and the clouds and the sun. And then I know when I do that, it makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, so, what do you want to talk about today? Started. I'm so excited. So first off, thank you guys so much for joining us live for those of us who are joining us and for those of us who will watch us on IGTV later. Thanks so much for joining us. We're so excited to yeah. present these midweek chats in combination with our masterclass series with Fort Worth Opera. And first, Joe, I just want to say thank you so much for having me. These classes have been amazing. I think everyone's getting a lot out of them. And well, I'm sure you're so fabulous. I mean, oh, you, you and I have known each other for a little while. A and uh, <laughs> you just you're so amazing. This is really wonderful. So thank you. But really, it's really, it's so great that you made this available for so many people. Um, to have hundreds of people on the Zoom with us every weekend is just incredible. So really, thank you. And I, I just wanted to know if you, first of all, could tell everyone sort of how you came up with this idea for this Masterclass series, because I thought it was kind of a fun little story. <laughs> well, the, the live Masterclasses with you in person was entirely my idea. Uh, because I just thought, wouldn't it be fantastic to have our young artists work with a world star? And I, I confess, I mean, I knew you were a great singer, but I didn't know you were such a great teacher. And uh, watching you in action was just mind boggling. Aww, so uh, then when we started to talk about the uh, virtual part of it, I have to confess I had less of a role because I am so um, behind in that regard. Today is my very first time in my life on Instagram, right? So Ryan had to hold my hand and take me through it for an hour and a half earlier this morning. Great. You've done such a great job. But here I'm... we are, right? Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so but I, what I love is that now the company is setting up more online interactive things. Right, which is all we can do right now. Which is all we can do right now. And I love that you guys are trying to stay relevant and current and, and it's really fantastic. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about what you're launching with Fort Worth Opera with the green room and what other things you're going to have going on with singers? I know you have some people doing some virtual music and recital type of things. So can you talk a little bit about yeah. that? We have, of course, singers in the green room singing, you know, presenting whatever they record for us at home. Awesome. And um, people are in different circumstances. Sometimes they are connecting virtually with their pianists. And sometimes they're um, <laughs> lucky enough to live with a pianist. You know, there are a lot of possibilities there. We have people giving lessons online. Um, again, that takes different forms. Um, we've tried to create interesting content about singers, composers, librettists, uh, people in all different parts of the opera business. Um, Yes. And, you know, occasionally we venture into the somewhat absurd discussion of what do you think is going to happen? Because although it's a very important question, there's no 
concrete or definitive answer that any of us can oh, give. Right. <laughs> it's the strangest thing. Half are carrying on even amidst the, I mean, the real uncertainty in our business right now, when are we going to get back to work? And actually, what is that going to look like? Right. And we actually do get to do it. And I think it's wonderful that you and all of your staff are, are continuing to work, first of all, we, we, fantastic that everyone's been able to contribute and I know that Ryan hi Ryan if you're on I know that Ryan's doing a lot and ha he's highlighting a lot of different people in the company behind the scenes which I also think is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's great to sh that you're showing you know your stage managers and your lighting designers and you know because there's many different jobs in the opera world that aren't just the singer on the stage and they aren't visible which is one of the very few positive things about this awful situation, that um, things that are typically invisible, we can take the time to make them visible and let people know uh, how many moving parts and real people there are behind the scenes uh, to make opera possible. Yeah. Can you tell us some of the singers who you're going to feature in the green room? Well, I, I, uh, I would like to do that, but I feel a little bit like I shouldn't because they haven't been put up there yet. And if for any reason anybody okay. says, you know, I'm not really comfortable with that, I don't want to have said so-and-so is going to sing and, you know, okay. um, but, but they're really good singers, you know. Um, <laughs> and I believe that that all comes on sort of in early August. Great. Awesome. So we'll look yeah. out for that. August and we'll see the fantastic singers you have lined up. We're so excited about that. Um, how do you think looking forward into the future, how do you think your next season is going to look with Fort Worth Opera? Is it because it's so far in advance? Is it something that you guys are really thinking tangibly you're going to be able to do in person or are you planning alternatives already? Do you have any We're planning idea? alternatives? But, but it is conceivable that by April of 2021, we could be doing things on stage. Um, <laughs> you know, all I can say is we, we would love it if that were possible. Of course. If it's possible in Bass Hall, great. If it's one of the shows that we had planned and had to cancel, then we'll of course try to hire as many of the people that, whom we had cast uh, as oh. have not already accepted other work during that period. But, um, you know, we'd also, before this all happened, planned new seasons. So we have not only shows that we didn't get to do, uh, but also shows that we're planning to do. Uh, then the alternative things are, if Bass Hall is not deemed safe, um, mm -hmm. are there smaller spaces? Are there outdoor spaces? And if even that isn't really safe, are there virtual ways Mm -hmm. to present performances. We have school shows planned for right. the fall. Now the schools are going to be having class, but virtually. So we'll be going into those classrooms, but with uh, virtual performances. And in addition oh. to the performance. So that they can have um, lessons and people to talk with and, all that kind of. I see your mouth moving, really but I don't hear anything. To... Are you there? Jen? Yes. Yeah, now you're back. Now we're good. No, I was just saying, I think that's a really fantastic option because the kids, they seem to really like virtual learning and virtual, you know, um, viewing. Right. You know, and I, I think that's a great way to get them involved in the opera, to, to go into the space, work, and then put it on the online for their classes. That's amazing. I love that. It's a great idea. I think so, too. I do. Yeah. Um, you know, even my three-year-old, I guess four-year-old now, four-year-old niece is in virtual camp after virtual nursery school, you know, and um, she just thinks it's the greatest thing. Of, of course. she doesn't <laughs> no, have a long... My yeah, she doesn't have a long history oh. of things to compare it with. <laughs> oh, of course. But still, I'm sure, you know, like my nephew, he's four. He loves everything on the iPad. I'm sure that they love it. Yeah, but yeah it's great. I've been doing everything virtually, too. I mean, you know Ray. And Ray's done all of his, um, all of his virtual for the 
the last, gosh, I don't know, three months, two, three months. So I think it's a really great way uh -huh. to connect the kids. It's exciting and fun and that's wonderful. How do you think your young artist program is going to look? Do you plan on having your full batch of young artists like you had last year or how, how does that how do you think that's going to look we'll have two resident artists who are the artists that have the most to do and right. we will certainly have some of our studio audit, uh, artists but the activities may be different and and again right. those activities will be determined by how local governments decide it's safe for right. us to perform uh, right. You know, if we have singers on the back of a pickup truck with a piano and we're doing hit and run performances on street corners, that's uh, safer than bringing hundreds of people together in a performance space. Um, so gosh, this is so uh, unknown still. I don't know if you saw about Christine Gerke's yeah, I, 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 performance, which I thought was incredible. So you have to be creative and I think that's Incredible. Wonderful. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah. All of us are certainly finding ways to be creative that we've not thought it. about before. I really do. I think it's fantastic. And I think, you know, if, if you do have a batch of young artists, we certainly know that the Zoom masterclass works well. So, <laughs> so you know. Right. You know. And so we hope you'll keep doing those. That's right. Um, so let's switch yeah. over to the young artist world because I'm actually very curious. I'm curious. If you'll be able to do young artists slash main stage audition via video submission in the fall when we normally have our audition season in America. Do you think that's a feasible way for you to do casting in the future? It, it um, would be, and it is. Or, or um, via... Yeah, it, it is possible. It's not ideal, but it's certainly possible, and it's certainly better than not doing anything. Um, I think that to a certain extent, we've all experienced virtual auditioning already, because if you see a YouTube broadcast of some young singer that you think is fabulous, you don't say, hey, you have to come down in person. You call them up and you say, are you interested in this job? So yes, that does, great. That, that does happen, right? That's great enough. Fabulous. So when you're looking, and this is for, you know, some of our young artists I see that are watching, when you're looking at a video submission or a YouTube video in order to cast a young singer, what are the things that you're looking for as far as professionalism is concerned, as far as, you know, the sound quality, the visual quality, things like that? Because, you know, some young artists, they think it has to be this super high level video and they go and they pay tons of money when really they could use an external mic and an iPhone and produce something actually quite great. So what do yes. you look for I, looking I mean, at? So I, I, I'm over 60 and, and I've been running young artist programs for 30 years. I, I started with one in Miami in the late 80s. Um, I think we're looking for the same things that we've always looked for which is people who have um, something to say through the medium that we're talking about. You know, I, I mean, it, it's always a crazy thing because some people are incredible communicators. Yes. Um, and and uh, I think that the standard gets higher and higher every year. You mm -hmm. know, there are more and more wonderful performer singers. Um, for me, hearing a beautiful voice is always... Uh, you know, the entryway to getting tremendously excited about some singer. And now uh, the technology is good enough that even over this uh, phone, here, Jen, let me put you on the spot. Would you just sing one note for everybody here? Uh. In the... <laughs> See, we know right away. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, you know, I, we yeah, know I, right away. You, you would laugh so hard. I don't know if you've seen the Zoom classes, but like over here on my Zoom setup, I've got like my big Bose like DJ headphones rocking like this. <laughs> and in the Bose headphones, I'm not kidding you, you hear literally the perfect sound quality. It's so great. Even, even with people yeah. doing stuff on their laptops, their iPads, I can hear everything I need to hear in these ridiculous looking at all. Which is fantastic. But yeah. I, I, so, so 
right? You hear right away. And, and anybody who is interested, I think, should go sit in on auditions because in a few minutes, you realize that it, it's in note number one that you know pretty much everything about the person's voice. You do. I, I know that that sounds absurd, but, but you really do. And no, you... another thing I really want to say is that no matter what you might think as a young singer walking into an audition, every single person sitting behind that table wants to hear you be successful and wants to hear you be wonderful. Yeah, you know, right. even if it seems that they look tired and they might be tired, but, but all they want is to hear great singing. They so, do. And we talked to David Lomeli last weekend, and he said mm -hmm. exactly the same thing. He said, we, we, want to, we want you to walk in the room and be amazing, because we yeah. want to fill the spots we have to cast. We, we want to find the great Lucia, the great Violetta. We want to find that. And I think that was so helpful for the young artists on the class to hear that, you know, they're not sitting behind the table going, ugh. Oh my God, <laughs> right? They're yeah. not sitting there going, I really hope this one's good, you know? It, right, it, right. And, and there are lots of different ways to be good. Yeah. That's also good news, I think. Okay. There, there are lots of different ways to be terrific. It doesn't have to be um, that everybody has a recording in their ear and wants somebody to match it. Not at all. There are so many different ways to be expressive and to communicate and to sing beautifully. And um, we should also say that the same is true virtually um, as Ryan and I are going through mm -hmm. for our masterclass series here with Fort Worth Opera. We can tell right away who we're like, yup, we want this person. We want to put them on this class with this person. Mm -hmm. with this we can tell right away. And you can also hear potential. You can hear the person who maybe isn't quite ready for this. Absolutely. Person, mm -hmm. But you want to hear them again to see how they've developed. And I think that's important to say that even though we may be submitting video auditions this season, that someone like Joe, who's watching your video on his computer and a fight, <laughs> can still hear right. you have the potential to- Completely, yes. In the program. And, and, and for me anyway, this is a personal thing, but I could just say the production values of seeing or hearing somebody uh, are, are not important. Yes. That, um, you yes. know, the voice, the personality, the, the, the artistic intent, the just desire to communicate something all comes across loud and clear as soon as somebody opens their mouth and starts going for it. So guys, for the young artists who are on the call, and I see a lot of them down there, I'm so excited that you all joined us today. Um, we, we've been talking a little bit about your auditions for the fall, and I think it's important what Joe just said about the production value not necessarily needing to be like 1080 HD quality in a studio with a, five cameras and then um, yeah use your phone use your iPhone especially if you have an iPhone 11 the mics in that new iPhone are amazing you can make beautiful recording with iPhone and iPad you can get you know, very inexpensive external mics to plug in the iPhone and iPad, which, by the way, we should say is a tax deduction. Hello. <laughs> but you can make these things in your home. You know, this isn't something where Absolutely. You hundreds of dollars to go into a studio and record something that's going to put you out financially just to be able to show your you know, your skill and, and, and what you have to give. I know my little Zoom setup over here, my little mic, it was $200 on Shure, Shure M88 Plus. And I have my microphone, I have my headphones and my, my halo lamp and I'm good to go. And I've definitely done videos for online galas with this equipment and it, it works great. So, you know, maybe I've got, I don't know, $300 of equipment in here. And it's, you know, that's way less than going to a studio and having someone make a, you know, fancy thing for you. So I right. just like that for you young artists, because yes, financially things are going to be a little challenging right now for everybody in our business, especially the young artists, especially the people coming out of school, you know? Somebody has asked the question, what about iPhone XS Max mic? Oh, do you I, know what that is? 
works great. It works like the iPhone 11 mic does. So you will be fine with that. You'd have to make sure where you place yourself, you need to place yourself back a little bit further so that, you know, the space of your room is allowed to create acoustic in the resonance and things like that. Don't stand too close because we lose, you know, all the ones. But also, Joe, let's talk about, you know, making the video for you professional with your presentation because you want to see in these videos an actual audition. We need to see your character, your your interpretation, all of that, yes? Right, you can't do what I'm doing right now and hand hold the phone. Yes. You, you, right, you have to somehow, I don't have a tripod, but let's say you, you are somewhat <laughs> ahead of me in this. And so you can somehow set your phone up so that um, you can sing and act at the same time, but that's all it takes. That's all it takes, right? And put on your nice audition dress, do your hair and your makeup. You don't even need to wear shoes. Or not. I mean, stuff. look, this is a new a new era <laughs> right now. Yeah. I, I don't think it much matters what, what, let's, what's let's put on. Think, you know, when you present yourself professionally, yeah. you don't present professionally, but that doesn't mean you don't you can't have sweatpants on the bottom because we can't see. Right. <laughs> Anything else, you know, wear your flip flops and uh, make your video. And you know, we all, it's a small world. Those of us who are, who are all passionate about opera and love it so much, it's a small world. And okay. so I judge a competition, somebody doesn't win, but they come up and they say, do you have any thoughts? And I say, yeah, maybe this, maybe that. Mm -hmm. and, and they call me or they do something and, and suddenly, you know, we're communicating over the phone and I'm listening and I'm saying, what about this? What about that? And they're saying, what about this? What about that? And that all works. I mean, yeah. we should be in communication with each other in any case. This Sarah Kennedy, who is a fantastic dramatic color tour, who was on our last class, she wrote, definitely didn't wear shoes for the master class. <laughs> Girl, I don't know. My <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Joe, thank you. I'm, I'm so glad that we got to talk about that because I know that there's a lot of young artists out there who are worried that they won't be able to make a good audition, you know, for this season because it's so delayed mm -hmm. and things are different. But I think as they are different. Have done, as, as Fort Worth Opera has done, as many companies have done, we all have to adapt. We have to adapt and we have to come right. up with a creative way of doing things. You guys are doing that, and I, I applaud you very, very much for that. And I, I well, thank you. We're so glad to have you as part of our opera family, you know, oh. and 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 all the wonderful people you bring with you. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I, so, I mean, I'm so happy to bring everyone. Really, I, I love to make connections in the business, and and if somebody can help, I, I just you know, it makes me feel so good inside to be able to help young. Mm -hmm. people. So, so last question that I have, and then I'm going to open it up for questions actually in the chat. So right. guys that are on, please shoot up a, a question for us and we'll be happy to answer. Um, what are your thoughts about what we're seeing in Europe right now, as opposed to um, what's happening in America, where Europe is filling their houses a quarter full, a third full, having two seats and then two seats open and then one seat and two seats open. Do you think that's feasible in America with the size of our opera houses or is it something we're really going to have to wait on? I think we have to wait on it. Uh, I love that the Berlin Opera was doing Wagner on the top of a parking structure. And yes. um, I'm sure there are lots of ways that we can find, but different publics are going to be different. And just as we've seen without opera in the equation, different cities and communities feel differently about how, how safe it is to gather. Mm -hmm. And um, what can we do except wait, wait and watch and, and see? Um, I think really, because I know there are so many creative people who know how to negotiate the technological cyber world, um, is going to be what are the new ways people find to perform that attract lots of people's interest. Yeah. Um, and, and I would say, you know, great to go ahead and put your dress on and sing auditions for a lot of companies over your phone, but why not find ways that those companies haven't thought of to communicate stories through singing over our technological devices Fabulous. that may take off. Agree, agree. What it, could, it could last a while, you know. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do. Unfortunately, I'm in Florida where people just don't want to wear those masks. I, I don't get it. Uh, right. Florida's, Florida's 
learning. I don't know what they're learning, but um... <laughs> I don't get it. I was at Target this weekend, and I'm not kidding you. Ten percent of the people in the store were wearing a mask. Ten percent, no more than that. Yeah. Okay. Say so. Yes, it could. Be. Is it just a follow up to that? Is it financially feasible in the United States where our opera houses are larger? Is it financially feasible to fill those theaters a third of the way full, or is it just not? Yeah, to not fill them. Yeah. Well, it could be feasible, but like most of opera, it depends on the generosity of patrons. Yeah. And if people feel it would be important to get the theaters active again, and they're willing to do whatever needs to happen with the bathrooms and mm -hmm. people climbing over rows. I mean, maybe you would do something with general admission where people don't have assigned seats mm -hmm. so that the person who's in the middle of the row doesn't have to worry about climbing over other people right. when they come later. Mm -hmm. um, so the, we, we definitely need to think through some of the things. Um, somebody online has written, I think outdoor concerts should go on with the warm weather. I mean, there are certainly a lot of ways um, to try and lessen the risks of spread. But is there a way to eliminate it? No. You know. um, until we have a vaccine. Somebody, Bonnie, Bonnie Joy has written, in order to reach modern audiences, do you think there would be an emphasis on contemporary opera that deals with modern topics? Um, yeah, absolutely, yes. I would say that's even happening already, but I think it will happen even more now. Especially in um, four. You guys do a really fantastic modern opera like every season, yeah? You guys have, what were you going to do this We season? have tried to do that for about 14 years. Yeah, we were going to do a world premiere this season uh, of Zorro. Um, Zorro. Hector Armiento wrote Zorro the opera. Uh, there's so much good opera being written now, Jen. I mean, you know, 20 years ago, it was pretty much of a desert in the United States. But th mm -hmm. those days are gone. Uh, lots of great stuff. No, I um, agree. And the yeah, thing somebody else is writing, it's especially hard financially without government funding. And um, I don't think we're going to get big government funding for getting all artists and artist-related people through COVID. Um, that you know, because the artists obviously are taking a tremendous financial blow as as are the agents, as are, you know, just about everybody connected with the business. It's, it's tough on all sides. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. And we're not going to get oh. government funding, I don't think. No, I don't think so either. It's, you know, even as a, thankfully, as a small business here in Florida, I'm, a, I'm an LLC, which those young artists who are on later on in July, we will have a whole Zoom lecture on taxes and LLCs. So make sure you join that. Uh, I'm an LLC in Florida, and because I'm the officer of that corporation, I am not eligible for unemployment. So thankfully, I'm still considered a small business and was able to get a payroll protection grant. Which is wonderful. But you know, that goes so long to give you and you have to apply for the forgiveness and all that. And it's very, it's very hard for many singers right now and many, and, oh, the managers who are getting hit super hard, orchestral players, choristers, everyone's really getting hit hard. So, you know, wherever the government can help individually as well as, as you know, big companies and, and programs, we need that help right now. We really, really do. And it's fabulous also that you have such a great donor system at Fort Worth Opera and you supportive patrons, because really all the companies are going to need that. All the companies are going to need their owner system to, you know, really be supportive in the next season or two to kind of get everybody back up on its feet. I think that's going to be huge. And you guys are absolutely there, which I think is fabulous. So anybody else have a question before we sign up with fabulous Joe Illick today? I'm just going to watch the feed for just a second. Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Yeah. <laughs> Joe, thank you. I really... Thank you, Jen. So Stay well. And I love that you just maintain such great positive spirits through all of this. Oh, yeah. I, I, we're trying. And, you know, you just have to keep busy. You have to keep busy. You have to keep being creative. And you have to keep, you know, 
self-motivated. You have to self-motivate and keep going. <laughs> we, uh, I think Sheila you so Jackson much says if someone wants to have an audition online, yeah, just just call me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fine. I would be delighted to hear you or any. I will say if if those on the um, chat right now and for those watching IGTV back, if you haven't applied for our masterclass series or for any of the Zoom lectures or masterclasses that you want to observe, you know, to masterclass at fwopera.org and Ryan and I will make sure that you have a spot to audit and we will also take your online application and if there is a spot in a future class, we are happy to put you in and see where we can help you the most. So I'm putting my so cell phone number online and then if anybody wants to sing for me, they can do it. <laughs> oh, look at that. You're amazing. That's there so nice. The guy, thank you so much for joining us on the chat. Joe, thank you so much. This is our first thank you week all. chat. More to come. So thank so you so much. So take care, everybody. Stay well. Stay sane. Yes. Stay And we'll safe. all keep supporting each other through this. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you much. so much, Jen. You are the best. Big kisses. Take care. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.